Justin Herbert is one tough son of a bitch. <laughs> that, that's my first that's... takeaway from this game. He was in agony after yeah. those two hits. In absolute agony. He could barely move the left side of his body. And as a result, essentially just didn't – like punted on a play – Halfway through the play on because he could and barely one. move. And then on fourth down, throws an absolute missile shot to keep them in the game. It's I know. all the credit to that, him for toughing that out because that looked miserable. This is going to be my semi rant. And I tweeted this is that's what I think is always funny about the process, especially with quarterbacks, is that everybody has in their head this like what they want from a football player. But this raw, raw drooling from the mouth, like, you know. I, I make the joke that the, it's the Tim Tebow stereotype. You, Everybody wants the Tim Tebow in college at Florida. He's scoring on the goal line touchdown. He's rah, 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 and everyone's going nuts. <laughs> most of these quarterbacks and most of these amazing players aren't like that. They're tough in their own way. They're competitive in their own way. They're all human. We're all, we all are competitive and have our own personalities in our own way. And Justin Herbert shows that. He's tough and competitive and just an amazing athlete. And it was really cool to see him do that. And uh, uh, truly not one of those where it's like, oh, he's banged up and we hear about it on the injury report. No, we saw him get hit. We saw him come back, miss a play, and then come back and compete. And I mean, it was incredible to do that. The third and one was kind of like weird where he's like, oh, whatever, I'm throwing this. And he's, I was he's hoping they were going to get him out of the game. I was right? like, get him That's out of the I game. Said. He should not That's be in I there said. right now. It's a I long said, season. You're down 10. And then, and then next play, he just throws a freaking missile, and it's like, okay, well, that's pretty awesome <laughs> that, that you can do that with a with a broken wing or actually a broken rib. Probably that's what it looked like, anyways. There is reason for optimism with the Chargers, with the coaching, with, on defense, with you know, just the chances that they had, with what they're going to be over the course of the season, with the improved personnel they have on that side of the ball. I have some issues still with what's going on on offense. Would you like to know? What Justin Herbert averaged air yards per attempt in the second half of this game. Do I want According to know? According to True Media. I, you don't Do want, I to want to know. I don't. What was it? 3.1. Oh, come on. It's 3.1. It, These are numbers that are coming is. out right after the game ends. That could be wrong, but I don't think it's wrong. No. I have no reason to believe that it's wrong. Oh, so that's man. what I'm looking at right now. It's 3.1. And it's what it felt like. dropbacks in the second half. And it's what it felt like. It's what it felt like. It was so much quick game. I understand why you feel like you need to operate in a condensed area. Teams are going yep. to put a roof on you and make you play like that. But how static their approach is living in that sort of world, it just limits the ceiling of what your offense can be so much. When it's stick and curls and all of these plays so where curls. guys are not catching the ball moving toward the other goal line yep. like there is no one that's ever catching the ball on the run within this offense the one that couple different times they ran the orb motion little rpo to deandre carter that got some yards they tried but every time to they did it but every time they did it they took mike williams out every time they did that play they took mike williams out so there's a tell when they did that st- the or motion play. Sorry, I I, I noticed that they which did is funny. Wait, you don't want your 6'4", 220 pound receiver to block, right? It, it, but it's also like, hey, hey, take a blow because we're going to run like this little little bubble stuff. But it's that's the thing. It's like it, it, you were having a tendency on something that should be a gimme play. If that makes sense, it's hard to know exactly how many opportunities he passed up. I am a little bit frustrated in how Herbert Street said this during the broadcast. So Justin Herbert gets through his progressions faster than any quarterback in the league. I don't think that's always a good thing. I think he's getting to some of these underneath throws really, really quickly. And his brain is such a fucking supercomputer that it almost moves too fast. There was a play where he had Everett on a little high low coming over the middle of the field and he went to the flat. And it's like, I I just need like, I need you to hang in one more beat, my man, because I just want wherever we can create ambition within this very condensed offensive game plan, I think they need to. But it's a frustrating team to watch. And the problem is, we've talked about this coming into the season. This, to me, this game is a perfect encapsulation, minus Keenan Allen, of what the Chargers offense really wants to be in the passing game, okay? There's really, I I tweeted this as a joke, Mike Williams is just posting up. Like, they're playing basketball with some of these looks. And Justin Herbert's just feeding the post. That's what they want to be with those big bodies. 
but they don't have anybody. It, it, I'm still going back and thinking about some of the concepts that were drawn up for AJ Brown in that Eagles game, right? Yeah. And just how often they're getting him on the move and being able to, even if you're living underneath, can you create explosive plays Gimmies. through design? But the Chargers yeah. don't really have those kinds of players. And I think that's going to show up where if teams are going to put that roof over you and you can't push the ball down the field, they don't really have the type of guys that if I'm going to catch, I'm going to hit a slant and this is going to be a 30 yard gain. And I think that the combination of the mindset they bring in, the type of game Joe Lombardi wants to call and the personnel that they have, I'm just worried about it. I'm worried about where the juice comes from having to live in the world that they're in right now.